Hi, this is Ask Brock. I'm Brock Yorty. This week's question comes ironically from an individual named Clay, who says, Brock, I'm having issues with sticky clay and shale. What can I do better? I don't know how often we come back to this question, but I put my Mud Men logo up, and really it's Mud Person because we got lots of great men and women that are fluids engineers, but clay does not have to be hard. First thing we need to think about is if we get it wet, it's going to become sticky. And that negative charge on the outside is going to get sticky and stick to our tooling and those type of things. And when it gets water wet on the inside, it starts to swell or it starts to break down because there's plenty of different types of clays and shales out there. And I know the geologists in the room are going, oh, why are you calling them the same thing? But they react similar. And for us, when we go back to the checklist, it's a clay and shale inhibitor. So we have to start out with a good fluids program that is there to encapsulate those clay pieces and make sure they don't get sticky. So they're sticking to our tools and booting off and that they don't get wet on the outside of the borehole wall and on those pieces and start swelling the hole. Now that I have my fluids program where I need it, I need the right bit. And I need to make cuttings that are somewhere beside the size of a nickel to a quarter. So let's say a half an inch to an inch. And then I need enough velocity with that pump that has good PSI at bit phase to move those cuttings away from the bit without deteriorating them because the more surface area we make with that fine particle, the more it's going to take up our clay inhibitors and the more bandwidth it's going to take for us to move that up. More surface area is going to take more power. And then we get into viscosity, we start deteriorating those. And then that's how we start getting into a situation where our torques go up and we get sticky. So I pick the right bit. If that's a drag, if that's a hybrid PDC, if that's a traditional tricone, and I want to monitor that I have cuttings coming out of the hole that are a half inch to an inch in size. If I can maintain that and I'm maintaining good flow and my rotational torque isn't going up, now just maintain a good penetration rate. Grab that stopwatch. Oh, that's right. Our cell phones now have this stopwatch. Put it right up on the, you know, the control panel and watch it. And set your rods at a good penetration rate. Three minutes a rod. Look at what you have for fluid and uphold velocity and measure it from there. So bit diameter is going to make a big difference. At 12 inch diameter borehole, you know, 330 gallons a minute is going to get you less than 60 feet per minute uphold velocity. And that means those clay cuttings are moving much smaller than that. So we need a fluid that moves faster than 60 feet per minute in order to carry those dense materials up. And really, I want to be at that 150 feet per minute. So next, I get that stuff to surface and I'm seeing it. How am I removing it? What is my solids control situation? If it's a mud pan, I got to make sure I'm shoveling it because the moment it goes back through that suction and our centrifugal hits it, we're all done. I can't inhibit it. It's going to become a dense viscous fluid and we're going to fight it the entire way. And if I'm drilling into a production zone, I get into those sands and then it starts producing a little water and I just cement it off, you know, bentonite, it's just a fancy clay. So I need to be able to inhibit that. I need to be able to keep it intact and I need to be able to remove it. Best solution is a shale shaker or having enough volume in your system that you can remove those cuttings before they get to suction. This is the dummy's guide once again to drilling clay. Clay. Good luck. I can't believe at 200 plus episodes, somebody actually named Clay wrote in. Let me know how this goes. Cheers.